What's up, guys? Welcome back to another great episode of Just Create. I always say great episodes, but that's because they really are. I mean, so much knowledge and information drops. Why not, right? So anyway, hey, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, today, I bring in on a uh, extremely special guest to me and to a lot of people who's going to really this this, this is going to this this episode here is going to be some some raw and some emotion and we're gonna hit some hot topics on this episode and so um but uh this whole show is called just create i'm bringing on one of the most creative people that i know in in, in my circles and no better than who i'm about to introduce now which is pat hilton from at pat hilton live from acoustic force how you doing sir good 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 it's always a pleasure to uh be a part of everybody's you know creative you know, output, you know, we're all trying to put something out into the world that's creative and something that's real. And I think that that's what we're going to touch on today is it's really easy to be creative and hit record and say what everybody wants to hear and post what everyone wants to see and <laughs> download the Canva app and make a bunch of memes. There's a little digital marketing tip for you guys. There you go. And anybody can do that. Exactly. But like it takes a whole lot of heart and grit and passion and purpose to, you know, really get on these stages and try and make a difference. And that's, or work these events like you do and try and create something that's making a difference. We talked about Dom Fawcett before we even streamed this, a guy that's just like, in our opinion, one of the best guys out there. Absolutely. If I'm running an event, you know, and I'm paying a video guy and this guy and this guy and this guy, and I got a budget, I'm paying Dom Fossett's on one of these hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's, I, he's I, really, really good. He is. And in, and in case you guys don't know who Dom Fossett is, actually, he's on one of my earlier episodes. So I got him before he went big time. On, uh, no, I'm just kidding. He oh, he's going to go big he's, time. He's going big. He's, he's, he's getting there, man. He is doing awesome. And what I mean by big time, he is he's he's just skyrocketing up with, with his message. And uh, not big time him. The guy's the most humble uh, he is. person and is willing to do whatever he can to help out people in, 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 in his capacity. Now, while we talk, I just want to apologize to everyone. I have this, uh, the winter, the winter sun here in my office. I got, I got like these windows and stuff. So like, Thomas is going to be very bright today. Yeah. It's going to be a bright episode and we have <laughs> Jesus coming down and right. shining his light on me right now. It's ridiculous. Like, look at this. This is insane. I have to go. Yeah, to, you're, you're being, uh, um, like, <laughs> Man. You're being illuminated yeah. by the angels of heaven. I know. I'm just getting bombarded. But uh, I, I really wish I could put blackout. I should put blackout uh, freaking curtains there. But hey, whatever. We're just going to make it part of the show. Yeah, this part of the entertainment. Look, guys, this is not a real studio. You know, it's just it's my office where I work at and I do fun things in. And, you know, that's what I do. So we're just here to create. It, exactly. Just create. So that's, that's good. Let's get started for here. Just to kind of introduce cool. yourself out real, really quickly about what you do. Um, and, and, and really just a little bit of a backstory about you. And then we kind of go into the, like some of the uh, dark sides of the creative side of things of trying to make a right. living being a creative and well, some and of the struggles that we're coming to. to is that, like we were just talking about every, anybody can, you know, pick up a microphone and plug it into their computer and, be a rapper or something these days. I think that's great. I think if that's what you want to do, you should totally do it and you should try and make it. And um, that's where the dark side comes in. So I come from the production background. My dad is a, my mom and dad are Missouri people and they're all about, you know, getting a job and working hard and that kind of stuff. And blue I'm like, well, blue collar, blue collar. Right. And it's like, listen, dude, I mean, it's not going to work for me going to the university of Missouri like mom did. That's not going to work for me. I need to go to like a tech school where I can learn the technology on how to produce live music shows and how to record and all this stuff, because that's where everything is going. It's going to be all live events. Um, the record industry is dying. And this was actually at the height of like Lincoln Park selling and like Backstreet Boys and all in sync. We're still on top of the record charts and he's like what are you talking about cds are selling like crazy i'm like but but i have a computer system that can steal your cd watch <laughs> and he remembered because he bought it for me yep. for christmas and i took uh rolling stones i took his cd put it in there and stole the whole album without paying for it 
And he was like, oh, wow. And I'm like, these are called MP3 files. So what's going to happen is people are going to learn how to do this and everything is going to become file based. And these guys are all going to lose fortunes of royalties and sales and all this kind of stuff because the technology is adapting to the record industry. And right. all of this stuff in 10 or 15 years is going to be free. You're going to have to offer way more than just music to make money. Right. No. And now look at the times we're living in. You saw it for coming. That's that's huge. Not, and, that's and so he did buck up and he sent me to a production school, the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences, which is actually right by you in Tempe, Arizona. Oh, yeah. So I went to school right there in the Tempe Gilbert, like Mesa yeah. sector, the few different Dude, that's, campuses. That's, that's my old stomping grounds, man. I, Dude, it's a legit place. And I learned a whole lot. But again, even when I was in that school, we were learning on these big, huge consoles. We were talking about this on our call prior to the show. Right. These big million dollar consoles. And I remember sitting in there like, well, wait a minute. Like, I can just run my laptop off of the console, <laughs> off one channel of the console and save it all to my, and I don't need to pay for the studio time. Why would anyone pay, you know, X amount of dollars when they don't have any overhead to use these studio systems? And, you know, the teachers didn't like that and it's this kind of stuff. And, but anyway, so I learned all that. I moved to Vegas in 2005, started working for production resource group. PRG is the name of the company. Yeah, 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 yeah. Audio for Tom Petty, American Idol, Depeche Mode, Madonna, uh, Billy Joel and Elton John, the Dueling Pianos Tour. We ran all the live audio production for all of that stuff. And I was the computer nerd kid. It was like, you know, uh, stoner friends with all the artists. Let's just be honest. <laughs> you know, I was everybody's stoner buddy that knew how to run the computer systems. And I was really, really good at being on time, being energetic. And that was part of the reason why they liked me is because I was always boom, 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 boom. And most people in the music industry aren't like that. They're slow, they're late, they're tired all the time. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it is, it is. And there's a reason why, you know, now I see it differently than I did back then. There's a reason why people think musicians are lazy and stuff and why musicians get a certain amount of money. It's because most of them aren't like me. That's right. They just aren't. And that doesn't matter how good you are. It's about how well you can relate to people. No, absolutely. Why is Justin Timberlake so successful as a musician and an artist and a movie star? It's because he goes way past music. Oh, yeah. He knows how to relate to people. Right. Well, he. <laughs> That's a perfect example of someone who doesn't fit that mold. Right. He's not just. Honestly, when I thought when I, when I end, when there was, um, what the hell is this? band's name called in sync yeah yeah i i thought every single one of those guys were going to be would done fizzle away. Would fizzle away and seeing uh you know jt like i would even like jt back then i can't I give a crap i'm not his now, biggest fan but i gotta give him credit now dude i'm gonna tell you right now i became a pretty big fan of right. him just because of like his his progression of always doing more right and yeah. his progression of being that actor, being, totally. you know, he's that triple threat. <laughs> like what like girls say. That's a right? good way to put it. You know, because he knew, you know, with music sales starting to decline with, you know, the labels starting to fail, he needed to become a producer and a writer. He couldn't right. just be the good looking dancer anymore in a group. He had to really de talk about personal branding. Yeah. He did it way before anybody like Gary Vee was talking about personal. Right? Oh, absolutely. Justin Timberlake was way ahead of the game. Yeah, people don't realize how long this guy's been around. I mean, since and Mickey he's Mouse Club. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 amazing. So that's, that was a beautiful example right there. Beautiful. I just perfect love, example. I call them beautiful. But yeah, but I mean, perfect he's example. He's on the talk shows. He's in the movies. He's writing the soundtrack for the movies. He's the voiceover guy. Like, dude, he's everything I'm trying to do now. Right. Because I made the mistake again after Tom Petty, after all that, I moved back home, started touring with a bunch of rappers, Afro Man. We did we did Cypress Hill and Too Short and all these people because those were the shows that I could get on. Because again, it's like I was really good at organizing and those guys were really good at showing up five minutes before the show. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That's why they hired me. Right, right, right. So it's just like then there was a built in crowd for me to perform for. So that's really where the acoustic force started touring the country as as its own entity and its own act and performance. And after a while, 
you know, I was never even in St. Louis unless I was at the bar playing songs. So I packed up my stuff in 2013 or something right? and, and moved out to San Diego. And that was when I was like, all right, well, now you need to make a shift. And it took five years to make this shift of writing songs for business owners and performing at business conferences and doing advertising for real estate agents and all this kind of stuff that I'm doing now. But in 2013, I was broke singing in the corner of the bar. The only guy that would hire me was Hennessy, Paul Hennessy. No way. If you go back and look at my Instagram, I'm at Hennessy's like every night of the week for like the last four years <laughs> because he has 13 or something locations in California. Right. So I was traveling around playing all the Hennessy's locations because everyone else was like, oh, you're too loud for our um, Del Mar Carmel Valley happy hour. No, your happy hour is fucking boring. And that's why there's no one here. Yep. So then I went to those places, the place packed 20, 30 people every week just to see me go ape shit in the corner. Yeah. So again, it's like, gets to a point where you have to stop listening to the one guy that said it wouldn't work and start listening and focusing on the one guy that is paying you to make it work. Oh, that and I think a that's a struggle entrepreneurs have. They want to make everybody happy. That's a struggle I've had being the music guy. You want everybody to feel good. Justin Timberlake doesn't come out with music and, and be funny and on all these shows so that he cannot make everyone feel good. Yeah. He's really, really good at making everyone like him. Right. <laughs> right. Like I like the guy and I don't even listen to his. Really. So here, let me, I kind of want to start or I want to tap but in. That's a what bit. I meant by like, that's where I'm at now. Now I'm doing songs, real estate agent, podcasts and all this. Right. So, so like do it as, as, a, as, as a creative. All right. So right. like, you know, the, for, for people that are maybe at that point where they, they want to do some creative and they want to do it, may do it for a living. And, right. and like, like how, what, what, and you kind of bring up a great, great topic about it. It's like being a creative, doing it for a living is one, or so being a creative is one thing. And right. Then doing it for a living is another thing, but being able to do it that separates you from everyone else, that's a completely different thing. And totally. so, so kind of that, that, that progression that you took, like you said, you went from being the musician guy to realizing that you need, if you, you know, you want to make a living. So you went out to bars and you hustled. Like, like if you want to know what hustle is all about, I mean, you're the, you just the poster child of hustle. Yeah, I mean, I sang four hour gigs by myself with an acoustic Ridiculous. guitar for years out here. Yeah, no, it's years. absolutely nuts. Um, and then, and then you went to where it's like, well, I I'm running a business. I need to make this a, 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 like this is my livelihood, right? So what do I have to do to be better than every other musician that's out there that can, that knows how to play? Because you brought it, up, you brought up a really good point. I think we were talking yesterday. You know, talent. There, there's t a, 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 tons of talented people out there, and there's talented people that are better than Lady Gaga, better than you know. Like, look at all the people that that are higher up. They have more. Yeah. There's people out there with much more talent. But what, what they weren't able to monetize it, they weren't able to monetize it. Right. And so what what is what takes that that drive? If you are a creative and you want to be able to um, you want to be able to make a living on it, how do you separate yourself from everyone else that is also trying to make it as well? Right. So um, this is a f great question. And this goes back to what I was doing even like before I was in a band in high school. And I've been posting some of those pictures now on on Facebook. You've seen like this was 20 years ago. And then my friends, they want to keep me transparent. They're like, it was really like 18.5 years ago. <laughs> but, but yes, that's like I was writing funny songs about um Miss Dr. Hagerman in fourth grade and singing them and stuff in the hallway and getting sent to the principal's office. So what I realized was I have this weird talent for writing like 30 second and one minute songs because then I can just write a hook, write us an, an easy little verse. This is called ABA songwriting. Like you got your A part that goes a certain way. Like if it's Justin Timberlake, it's can't stop the feeling. 
That's the A part because that's the chorus. Right. Yeah, it's not the feeling. Um, and so then you got your B part, which is like a little 15 or 20 second verse. And then you go back to the A part. So it's like I was making up little choruses and then singing a little thing about this and then going back. And people were singing this stuff in grade school and stuff, walking around the hall singing my songs. And so even since I was a kid, it's a, and it was weird stuff. Like it wasn't like something you'd hear on the radio or anything. But now that the Internet is around, I was like, well, maybe if you just start taking viral videos and putting a viral video in the corner and grabbing your guitar and singing about the viral video, maybe that will get some people to start watching you. And it worked. So I wrote this one song, the St. Louis blues. I'm from St. Louis. So the St. Louis blues were in the playoffs. And if you know the St. Louis blues, it's like they're, they're, getting they're anywhere in the playoffs for the blues is a big deal. Right. So there was this chick in the front row and she had big boobs. Right. And it was this viral article about the rally boobs chick. So oh I wrote this rally boobs song and it literally got like 120,000 views and a million people were impressions with zero paid advertising. Wow. wow. And it was just like, this works. I knew this was going to work. So then I started writing this stuff about everything, everything under the sun. Some lady gets hit with a stop sign in the face. I'm writing a song about it, you know? And then Grant Cardone, who I started to follow because I listened to that Andy Frisella podcast. Right. And he was on this Grant Cardone guy's show, posted a video. Hey, if you're an artist or a creator or a video person, listen, I'm trying to get verified on Instagram. So if you make me some content, I'll share it on my pages. And I'm like, oh, shit, dude, this uh, is perfect. Uh, like, did you just do this and... just to invite me personally? <laughs> right. And I, so I wrote this Instagram verification song and sent it to him and Elena, his wife. And Elena messaged me back like two seconds later. and was like, oh, my God, this is so hilarious. Do you have a downloadable file? And I'm like, absolutely. Again, this is exactly what my dad and I talked about. Now, this person in Miami is downloading my video file uploads it all over his pages. Grant Cardone's got millions of followers. And then it gets like 50,000 views on like Instagram and on Facebook and on this and that and the other thing. And people are bombarding me with messages like, how can I get one of these songs? Absolutely. See and that and that, like, that gives. Oh, thank you, thank you for hitting. You, you're bringing up a really good point because, like I said, what separates you from other creatives, and right. a lot of it has to do with the freaking work ethic that taking your talent and then using it, even though you're not getting paid on it yet, right? Oh yeah, like, we're, I made we're, hundreds of those. We're, songs, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to that point, but for the, not getting paid, but just putting stuff out there, just creating things yes. that you that you do and you put it out there and it gets in the right hands. Next thing you know, you have now created a demand. You have now created um, an experience, like like a, a, a authority, because you've now established that you're with Grant Cardone. You are, you know, you've done the, the it opens up so many other avenues and doors that will eventually lead to revenue. And so, you know, I think a lot of people are always still looking for those quick, you know, hits. I'm trying to get discovered type things. And it's like, it, just doesn't it takes, anymore. it doesn't happen anymore. Right. It, there is no, ju there, it doesn't happen like Justin Bieber being on the street, right. Or whatever and that, yeah, his story and that, is. That, uh, it does, but that was at that time when right. it happened. Right, right. And you just so rarely see that anymore. But like very rarely. But it's all about what got into like like it's still like what got you to this point was the fact that you were hustling every single day. And I know as a creative, like we it's hard to turn off your mindset or, or turn off your mind. And you're always the one thinking and it's like like I stay up late at night. I feel like late at night all of a sudden like all these ideas come into me and it's like I have yeah. to write them down in order for me to go to bed. Otherwise I'm up you know, and, and thinking about it and going through it. Like it, I think it took about a year of me thinking about this show to that, just do it, just, just to do it, you know? And so it's, there's always ongoing and there's always ongoing of me how to improve this show. You know, obviously I'm, I'm failing right now with this freaking sun, but anyway, I think you look great. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. It's like, it's like angelic. <laughs> At least it's blocking your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm wearing the hat, you know? Right. And, but, uh, um, so anyway, it's just, uh, it, it it's it's that mentality that you took. You're like you just gotta grin and bear. And so, 
you know, I kind of was for me seeing in the video production world, it's another it's another industry that I see being overly saturated, um, mainly because due to to the way technology is and with how cameras are at a very cheap price. I mean, you used to not be able to get a video camera at, unless you worked for a video production company. And that's like there were 20, 25,000. Now you're getting they're making cameras. There are the mirrorlesses, the DSLRs. You know, it's it's easy. It's, it's just accessible. Like we were talking about with audio. You don't need a huge console anymore. Like, no. I think these are both USB microphones and we're like it's the technology yeah. scaled down. It's yes. But that is also done like you talked about with Grant Cardone getting that to him before Instagram would have been almost impossible. Yeah, you have to go through as people. I mean, this social, you know, with social media, it gives you direct connect. Now there's some right. downsides of that, but like, but overall, it's easier to connect with some people that were, would, would never been able to, unless you went through like a PR firm, right? And totally. so, um, so. And who knows if it even would have worked at that point. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is like, even in this industry, what I've been finding is that what separates let's say someone like my company versus a student that just graduated college and is creating YouTube videos. And then because people think that they can do video, that they should be able to do everything that that's that you have to be very careful with that. Now I I'm, I'm encouraging everyone to do video like, like, yeah, you, you know, do whatever you do can. it, do it and hustle. That's the only way you get better. But, but just because when I went to uh, you know a boxing class at Title Boxing doesn't the, mean I want to fight Floyd Mayweather. Right, right. So <laughs> exactly, and so you may you may uh, technically know how to shoot a camera, but right. do you know how to tell a story? Do you know how to work with businesses within you know the the, the mindset of a business person versus being a creative? You know, there's mm -hmm. do you know how to be get things done on time? There's so much that's more involved than just doing what you like to do with, you know, it's not like what you make music. There's so much more involved than I just like making a song. Do, right. Exactly. You know? And so you know, that's where you kind of, it goes back to, you have to be more than what you like to do. You right. know, you became, you got into video yourself. You're starting to learn to edit. You started learning how to, um, you know, work the social media environment and how to be right. able to distribute things out, how to organically uh, get people views, you know, how to be able to do that. But it all started with, you just want to create music. Right. right? And so, right. so, you know, my encouragement is, is that when, and especially for the younger crowd that is that, that wants to create, just understand that if you want to make a living out of it, you're going to have to make new skill sets in order to make a living what uh, right on that and one i can't thing. emphasize enough like speed like do, like do as much as you can if it sucks at first like who cares welcome to the club i was just <laughs> talking to somebody about joe rogan's podcast was in the first room of his apartment and it didn't really look that cool but now he's got elon musk on the show he's got this full studio with like an eight channel ultra gain like yep. he's got nice shit now yeah but it wasn't always like that no no, he still just that little from... guitar that I had when I made the Grant Cardone video was like a four hundred dollar guitar, and it's like now I play like a fifteen hundred dollar Taylor, which still isn't that expensive in the music world. But right. for me, that's the nicest guitar I've ever owned. <laughs> I used to make fun of Taylors because I'm like, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean it sounds way better. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you do. <laughs> oh, right, right. It's sort of like me. It's like. Oh, I don't need this. Uh, I don't need a like a seat. Like I, I shoot off of the cinema camera, right? Like a, a right. C two hundred. And before that, it was just a five D Mark three, you know, uh, DSLR. Uh, and and you know, I'm like, ah, shit, I could do everything that everyone else does with this cam, that with this camera. And then I get the new camera, and I'm like, oh man, this is so good. Like I can't, do, you know, it's it's just right. a whole new level. So the, you got to upgrade your game. When got you up to. to upgrade your equipment too. Exactly. If I want to be good, I, I have to use stuff that's good right, right. If i want to be at a certain level um so so we kind of talked about what it takes to be separate from everybody else and that's that's hustle that's bringing in new finding new ways to 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 um create you know other than and just, then executing you know, on and those executing ideas. on it it's all everybody's got great ideas that's like entrepreneurship 101 everyone's got great ideas but the difference and this is grant cardone 101 too the difference between someone who's making money doing it and someone who isn't is the time that they shorten how much the idea is now creating revenue 
Right, right. And so that kind of leads me to the next thing, because for the creatives that are out there that are doing this as a living um, and that are making money off of it, I think there's one commonality, no matter what you are doing, right? Video, music, writing, whatever the case may be. Uh, one of the biggest commonalities is, is um, how, why is it as a creative, I, th- I swear this is the only industry that I feel like we get taken advantage of of our talents um well why do you think that is well it's because like you said oversaturation and this goes right into the next thing that we we're about to talk to which is like leadership speakers <laughs> yeah <laughs> that bullshit's oversaturated too which is why 98.3 percent of those people don't get paid to do it Because there's always some other asshole that's going to show up and say the same thing for free. So why would I pay Pat to show up to our event and sing and play songs, regardless of how good he is or how much experience he is, when I could just get, you know, Johnny Dickhole to show up at the event and, and Johnny can play Blister in the Sun and Wagon Wheel and Brown Eyed Girl and Free Fallen 2. Why are you any better than Johnny? And it's obvious to me and it's obvious to anyone else, but it's like, we're not even going to pay for either one of you to show up. And if one of you decide to show up, then great. They're going to find a video person who's going to come and, you know, film the mastermind, no matter whether they're paying that person or not. Right. Right. That's the problem is that people, like you said, people are so excited to just create. Yep. That it's like they they play on that. Well, if you just create for us, then you're definitely going to get jobs in the future. That's not true. And that is a false thing that Gary V ran his mouth about on these internet channels that fucked everybody over is just go out and just work for free and give it all away and work for free. And then what happens is you end up, you're 40 years old and you got no money. Right, right. So- I think there's, uh, there's so I, again, I like Gary, but like, it's easy to say when you're charging $150,000 a keynote, bro. Right. So this, this brings up a good point because I want to make sure that people that are clear. Out. right. No, exactly. I, but I want to make, I want to make things clear. And I talk to a lot of people that are in, starting to get into this industry. Um, that is, uh, that is starting out. Right. And then they, they right. ask me because this is because we're sort of kind of giving a, a contradiction in a way, right? Where it's like, hey, work for free so you get your name out there, but but don't don't work for free because you're you're devaluing yourself and you're devaluing everyone else. Which one is it? And here's here's how I explain it. And maybe you can maybe you could agree or disagree right. or throw in, but this is the way I see it is, and this is where I went wrong when I first started doing it, but. There's a difference between working for free on stuff that you choose to work on. True. Right? So you choose what you want to say yes to when it comes to um, giving your services away. Right? And if you feel like it's a great opportunity to put your name out there and, you know, do it. But at the same time, don't say yes to free for everything because you're devaluing yourself and people that are in your industry. Right. right? It brings everybody. It brings everyone down because what happens is that this is what I find very. This is what I found. and, 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 And it hasn't proven me wrong yet. Every single person that I did something for free. I have never got anything in return that I thought, like, and what I mean by that is being connected or being like, oh, this is, you know, like by doing this, you're going to, you know, meet these people. I'm going to introduce you to this. I'm going to do this for you. If you just come and do this event, you know, right. and you do it and then you give them their product and you never hear from them again. And then next thing you know, next year, they're looking at another person that wants to do it for free because they right. just, they know they could turn and burn. So right. there's a difference with doing it for free when you're doing small projects like like yourself. You just created these little these jingles, these these little videos that are viral and, and you you push it out because you did that yourself. That was your idea. You did it for other right. people. People didn't ask for it. You created the demand, right? right. Like like there was no demand for that at all, but you there created wasn't. the demand. And so that's there wasn't. that's And that's now the there's a hundred other people biting that idea, which is fine. Right. Because there's 
one acoustic force, motherfuckers. <laughs> exactly, the, God, the Godfather. But, right. So it's there, there's a difference between choosing what you want to do to work on for free to be able to get your name out there. So that's why people that are starting out to do do your own video projects. Create create your own setup. Right. Bring your in your own people because now you're Make not your only own organizing your own podcast. Do that on your own. Do that for free, and you do it for because you love it and you want to do it. All that's going to do is just Jimmy John Coleman's podcast show. If you're recording that and producing that and videoing that, you've got to get paid for your time. Yes, exactly. But if someone's coming to you saying, hey, exactly. Know when it's in a client. If someone's approaching you saying, hey, I like like (laughs) people asking stuff for free. It's like, well, wait, 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 wait a second. Well, you know, I'm a business, you know, you're a business. You know, again, tell me a little bit more that about stems it stems from this stuff. And I want to, I want to take that and blow it up. Yes. Because, um, we talked about Cardone and then we talked about him sharing the thing. Elena got it to Grant and Grant shared it all over his pages. So now I'm like, all right, well, if this guy shared the video, well, I want to play his conference now because this guy puts on the biggest business conference out of all these gurus and speakers and money people. I know he's legit. I know he does real estate. I know he sells great products. I've read his books. I've watched his stuff. He is, like you said, he's like the godfather of sales training. He's the best. Right. Or everybody wouldn't be speaking at his event if he wasn't the best. Absolutely. Like the Super Bowl, 10X Growth Con is the Super Bowl of entrepreneur events. And so I'm, I started bugging him and calling his office and get in touch with this person and that person, bugging Elena, bugging Jared Glant, bugging Grant, bugging this person, bugging Sherry Hamilton, bugging this with Dave Robards, I'm bugging him. Steve Spray, I'm bugging your ass. I'm all over the whole, I got him on, I'm like a freaking beehive that got knocked out of the tree. I'm like, Sigh. you know? And eventually it gets to a point where they're like, all right, dude, it's awesome. If you want to play, how about, and I, uh, you know, we, you get in touch with this, this like final person. And I couldn't get a hold. It's the, it's his executive assistant. She doesn't work for him anymore. He's got a new gal, but she was really, really great. Her name was Katie. So we'll leave it at that. Got great it. gal. So I'm, I'm bombing Katie's email like every week, calling Katie all the time. And it gets to a point where, and again, here's where, how bad do you want it? Mm-hmm. How bad do you really want to play? The biggest thing, because once you play the biggest thing, okay, then you have the right to say no to all this other stuff. So I was willing to play for free right. to be able to get into all these other ones and get paid, right? There you go. Exactly. So I eventually drove to Vegas with my pregnant wife to this Thrive event that a bunch of my friends were at. I didn't tell anybody I was doing this because I knew Elena Cardone was speaking at Thrive. So I show up in Las Vegas. We stay at the shittiest hotel in Las Vegas, like the best Western. Don't stay at the best Western across the street from Mandalay Bay unless you want to friggin' choke on smoke in the lobby. So anyway, I stay there. I walk over to Mandalay Bay to try and catch him at Starbucks well, where he's getting his morning coffee because he posts everywhere he is. He's given his location away. If you're a Mission Impossible agent like I am, who used to work, like we've talked about, backstage at huge events. It's way harder to find somebody back then because you don't know where they are. Right. It's like, hey, you know, I'm at Starbucks. All you hustlers, come say hi. I'm like, oh, shoot, don't go to Starbucks. Go, go, go. (laughs) Jumping over benches and shit. I get there and I'm like, oh, he's gone. (laughs) So I'm like, well, since I couldn't catch him at Starbucks, I'm going to have to find a way into this Thrive event tonight wow so i text my buddy call my buddy frank frank sell the the uh, baby beard club frank okay and i'm like dude is there some kind of deal where i need something to get in because i know how this this stuff works what color wristband do i need to get into this vip party tonight? <laughs> he's like oh dude i think it's like this 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 green wristband everyone has i'm like great like Neon green, send oh, me a screenshot. Chroma green, neon green, yeah, yeah. Takes a picture, sends me a screenshot. I go to CVS and buy the same color wristband, put it on my arm, go to the Thrive thing, blow past security with a fake wristband, even though my name's not on the list, with a group of people. 
wait outside the freaking inner circle $10,000, let's chummy it up with Ty Lopez and Grant Cardone room and close his ass in the hallway on playing 10X Growth Con. He sends me a ticket like two weeks later. Oh my God. And I played the event, 9,500 person sold out arena in February of 2018. That's <laughs> but that's what it takes. That's yep. the difference between Justin Timberlake and whatever the guy Lance. Yeah. 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 Lance Bass. Where did Lance go? And that, again, nothing against that guy. I'm sure he's highly successful. He's probably a great dad or yeah. a husband or whatever he is, but he ain't JT. Cause JT <laughs> took it a step further. JT was willing to lose it all to become the biggest thing in the world. And yeah. now JT's got Jay Z rapping on his tracks. Yeah, and vice so, versa. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, and everyone at that 10x event spoke for free. Andy Frisella, like we talked about, Andy earlier. Andy spoke for free. Ed Milet spoke for free. Uh, Tim Grover, Mike Michael Jordan's personal trainer. Wow. Spoke. All these people did it for free because. There's never been an event that big unless your best friend is happens to be Tony Robbins. Right. I was about to say that. Yeah. Maybe, that's it. That's that's, it. that's the only competition that he has at this point. Yeah. Um, and is it really in competition? It's, it's, it's like. No, they're very similar. Yeah. I think Tony Robbins is a little bit more like jump up and down to a Pitbull song than Cardone is. But, um, you know, so, I. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good. But I made that sacrifice. This goes right into what we were talking about. I created the opportunity, right? By creating my own, um, uh, I would call it media Yep. file. Yeah. So I created my own little media file with an MP3 song and an MP4 video, burned it down, sent it, got it to Elena, closed the deal face to face and played that event. And everyone worked for free. Now I'm like, all right, well, I just did the biggest one. I should now be booked on all these fucking things. This should be easy now. So I email Cole Hatter from Thrive to try and play Thrive. Never hear back from Victoria Mendez, his assistant, which is fine. I just did an event with Cole Hatter and Billy Jean and all those guys in San Diego this past weekend. Great guys, but I'm starting to see it's like, well, maybe this isn't so easy. Email the Albert Preciado from the Driven Conference. I'm like, dude, I, I want to come play here. I just did 10x growth. God, man, I'm the acoustic force. You know what I mean? Put me on your stage and I'll blast the place. Didn't happen. You know, you know, I'm back at Meltdown. Yeah. Uh, th Meltdown three. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, go up there and play. I drove there all night long. I was exhausted, had no hotel. Or anything. I slept on Corey Thompson, had an extra bed in his room, which wow. again, we'll get to that in a second. Played that event. And it's just like, now I'm still playing these events for free and I'm not making any money and I'm making all my money off the of Hennessy's locations. Where does the transition happen? Like, when is this actually going to like turn into Pat getting paid to be at these seminars and these meetings and these conferences? When is this going to happen? Is no one ever going to get paid at these things? So I realized that most of the people that get up on these stages and say, I'm making all this money as a speaker are full of shit. They're making their money somewhere else. Absolutely. Like Cole Hatter's got a really great real estate business. The guy's legit. Like Billy Jean is marketing is obviously got a very successful marketing business in San Diego. Absolutely. Nice guy. Obviously, he's legit. Not everyone fits into this category, but 98.6% <laughs> of the people who fill in the cracks at these three-day events haven't done shit. And they're out there selling you courses on how to be the number one transformational speaker when they're speaking for free. What kind of logic is that? Again, that's like me... Um, boxing at, at title boxing one time, you know, and, and then getting online afterwards with my sweaty shirt and my hand wraps and being like, I'm going to teach you how to be the next Floyd Mayweather. Right. 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 People would be like, Pat, you've lost your mind. Yeah. Or like people that come out, like to say, like I've scaled, uh, numerous of businesses like, okay, what, what business? businesses? Like what, 
what were they were they tangible businesses or is this just right. like another online business? I like, always what? go back to Andy because Andy he runs First Form International. He's got a product. He has right. A product. He runs supplement superstores. They sell these products. I've used the products. They're phenomenal products. I, I've met all these different people that work for his organization. Wonderful people. That's like that's a prime example again, like a Billy Jean or an Andy Frisella or um or a Cardone. These people run real businesses. Yep. And so it's it, it becomes real hard to take shots at certain events because people think you're hating on those people. Uh, 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 uh. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the 30 minutes here and the 30 minutes here and the 45 minutes here and, and all these people that come out of the woodwork that are now inspirational and motivational and transformational speakers that right. are there during the hours when those people aren't right that right that is where the bullshit happens right so how can you say it's such a great event when you weren't even there during the time people were telling me email doesn't work <laughs> somebody said that at this last event over the weekend email doesn't work i was on the phone my buddy Frank Kern and you know <laughs> such name said, droppers, right? <laughs> he said the email doesn't work anymore, and that's why he started doing Facebook Live. You know why he did Facebook Live? Because email doesn't work. If email doesn't work, then why does my wife buy uh, Carter's deals for the baby every single time an email comes in? If email doesn't work, why do we go to Kohl's and get great deals on shoes? Every time Cole's cast comes in, because it does work. <laughs> it, does, it might. Yeah. It's and this is actually a good Gary V quote. Everything works. It's just that certain things work better for this person than they do for that person. Right. Maybe Frank Kern's email thing wasn't working as well as it did, so he started using Facebook to create the leads, and that worked better at that time. Telling everyone email doesn't work makes you look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Love and it. when is somebody going to stand up and say this? Oh, when I, is somebody going to say this is wrong? I, I, that's misinformation. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I completely agree. And that's and it's I, coming from someone speaking for free who's never been paid to be on stage and really is not an expert in anything. Has never made a product. Like they make like some of these like courses. It's like it's courses on how to use someone else's product. Right. Like click it's, funnels. It's right. That's that's. That's a product in a way, but like and a it's, great about, product. And it's a great product. And again, if we're going to be transparent, I've introduced Russell Brunson on stage before. Go to YouTube and yeah. type Pat Hilton introduces Russell Brunson. Right. Great guy. Right. Love Russell Brunson. Great product. But there's a there's a left and a right to everything. Right. Right. Just and as much as somebody can teach you something that's wonderful on the modules in ClickFunnels, someone can also fill you with bullshit. Yeah. No, Exactly. I, I, I completely agree. Like, I, so that's why I want to make sure the names that come out of our mouth, these are people I've played on stages that they've spoken on the same events that they spoke at. Yeah. Which and is great. And also just know that what they created has been amazing. Like they, they, they right. found, they found a demand. They created these demand guys are and, innovators. They, they are innovate. They, they are, are today's modern innovators. I completely agree. It's just seeing the, some of the residualness of that or the, the the what follows that is that people are the ones that are not the innovators they're, they're yeah. trying to be in that same space they wind it up and slingshot it in some remixed form yeah, exactly and put a different name on it you know with some bullshit yeah, yeah. it's you, we got to be careful with that is what i'm basically saying like if it's people scary. say you need to automate 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 it's like yeah okay well let's see where your level of your business like, is at we before can't you start automate doing this that. no this, this is you can't automate this no absolutely not you can't automate closing grant cardone in the hallway no you I can't automate hustle it. you can't automate hustle sorry it's impossible it, it, you know and so that's i guess that's the biggest thing that, that you and i are both having some i guess frustrations but but just we feel passionate about because we as creatives because it's not creative is not an automated thing. Like, like that's right. where there's in, in a, in a world where there's so much and automation. Any one of those guys I named would agree with that comment. Yep. Yeah. Andy for would be like, you're damn right. If you don't do the fucking work, it doesn't matter how good your product is. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you matter. take my megawatt and don't do the work, you're probably still going to be a fat ass. <laughs> 
That's what he would say. It's 100% true. If you don't eat healthy, don't just, you're not going to. Don't gonna... just buy the powder and dump it down your throat and think you're, we don't say that in our product advertisements because it would be false. Right. Right. Yeah. You're no. damn right. It's Is it a great, I, I dump that shit down my throat and feel awesome. But then I go do something. Yeah. You could. <laughs> That's why Take I play action. on the same stage as him. Right. And why I have the right to say that I have. Am I Mr. Successful Millionaire? No. We talked about that on the panel. I've never made six figures, never made millions of dollars. That was never my goal. Right. My goal was to play the biggest stages and work the biggest stages with the biggest names in the game. And I've done that. From Tom Petty and Madonna to Andy Frisella and Grant Cardone. I've done it. Yep. So nobody can take shots at me. Because I stood on that stage with my blood, sweat, and tears and played for free and earned it just like every other motherfucker that weekend. And that's it. why I hate this fake I'm experienced. It's like, that's funny because I didn't see you at the biggest event last year. <laughs> you know, hate right. to break it to you. And then we're supposed to like not say anything with this fear that, oh, well, you can't say that or maybe people won't hire you. But they're already not paying anyone. <laughs> it, hiring means that there's an actual exchange right. of money for service called capitalism here. And <laughs> well, I'm dude, afraid that I'm going to lose out on not working for free. I'm sorry. I'm so done with I that. I piss off the guy who drives in a Rolls Royce that doesn't pay anybody, then I'm not going to get the gig. Think about how stupid that is of a reason to not speak up. And for a while, I'll admit, I was, a, I was, for, I was afraid. Well, absolutely. Cause to uh, say anything. We have a mindset. We have a mindset that we want to be able to hey, look at this, man. I got everything going. F my sign's it's, about it's to fall down. down. Like, over yeah, th this thing so is what? just, Oh, who cares? Like, this is, this is this hilarious. This is the way it goes, man. <laughs> oh my God. This is a makeshift show. I swear. I love it. I love it. Um, but it's just like but, what we talked about. We can try and make this perfect. Yeah, we can try and make this. We I could have a little script. We could go down and make sure we're real articulate and and careful about what we say, or we can just say the truth. Right, and that, that's the truth I, needs to be said. That's why I wanted to get you on this, and, and, and I've always been wanting to get you on this just because of the creativeness that you that you are, the creator that you are. The I mean, you, and you are a great dude. You're a funny dude, but there's there is this serious side, and I think. I think as people like you and me, where we are, where you got to understand, people don't realize you can't automate what our thoughts and ideas are. No. You can't automate our creativity and what you got and what people are needing is that they need th this, like, like they, people could copyright, but they don't know how to make that copyright into a beautiful story. Right? right. They don't know how to make that into music, actual things that people look for. I'm sorry. People don't like reading <laughs> generally. They want to be able to well, hear that, it. If they, they if want to they be able to hear it. reading books, then Audible wouldn't exist. Yeah, people read. Exactly, exactly. People want to hear it. People want to see it. Why? Because it's a in quicker way. way. It, and it's quicker. People it, yes. with it, in the time of information where it, the time to take something and read versus just hearing and seeing while it's you're on the go. You, you know, like it's, it's, it's crazy. So like when you do copyright, you know, that's all well and good. You pay for that. Like, I, I just never understood the value of someone paying like in a mastermind program and, and, and to tell you strategies, I guess, in a way, but it, like not every strategy works in every single industry. So stop trying to apply it to every industry and then, but like sell it for like 25 grand and then but you don't, you're not actually helping the person out. You get on weekly right. calls or you get on, you know, or you get, you know, you talk about, you know, saying good job, like keep it up. You're going to steal struggles, but this is what I do. Like there's, I don't understand the value, especially, I mean, I think there's value there, but the amount of what they're requesting versus actually us providing a product mm -hmm. blows my mind. Like, like, like we, we. I wanted to bring you on because I feel like there's a time now, especially in today's environment, where people will work for free, which is fine. And you can hire those people that work for you free. You got to earn your stripes. You got to earn your but, stripes. But, but I'm going to tell you something. I've never showed up at Hennessy's and had them not pay me. Exactly. Not one time. Exactly. So, so why I'm, is it that Hennessy's, the bar, values Pat Hill? That's where the acoustic force was like created on that panel. Right. 
you know, why is it that they are like, oh yeah, you'll get all those gigs, man. You're definitely good enough. Just make sure that you get to a point where those people are paying you. Exactly. And I just, I, I, it's and a I'm calling now out at to the creators. Point where it's, it's never happened yet. <laughs> John Whalen is going to pay me this weekend. Yeah. John, you're fucking paying me. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. He's it, cool. We got a little, he's going to take care of me. But like, that's probably the first time. You know what right. I mean? I've yeah. gone. And again, that was my agreement with Cardone. I'm not fucking throwing him under the bus. No. My agreement was, I'm going to get up there. I'm going to blow the place away. I'm going to give it all I got. And the opportunity was worth way more than any dollar amount that right. I could have afforded to be in that room. Right. Right. So that's the truth. Yeah. No, that's I, I, that's beautiful. I but. can't afford to just go around and freaking play every little mastermind event just because, um, you know, Billy Jean speaking later that night. <laughs> Billy Jean has a Rolls Royce and a business because he's a successful businessman. Yep. So he can afford to take the time to go do that. Pat can't right now. Right. Pat is, you know, barely hitting uh, health insurance payments and you know rent payments in san diego i'm not at billy's level i'm just not yeah. as far as business yeah. i think my talent is on is on that level but right. get, like we talked about talent and and business are two different things he's a much better businessman than i am right now yeah and maybe it, he'll always have a be ahead of me in that area no, I, I love how you just sum there's that up. nothing mean about that yeah. that's a respect thing I wouldn't say that if I didn't respect what that guy does. Yeah. Talent. Talent is, you know what I mean? Prerequisite, I guess. I mean, like it's, you're right. You have the talent and, and, and like we all, we both have the talent, but we haven't had the business acumen yet to get yeah. to where the status that we want. Now we're working on it. Like that, right. that's, 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 that's where I don't want people to get lost just because like, I'm not comparing myself to when right, I start right, yeah, right. to where, where he's at. Like, like I'm only in three years into this business that I've been doing, right. right? Like, like, and going from from where I'm at to, or from where I was to where I'm at, there's just been an, an astronomical improvements, and it's just going to continue right. to improve. But like, I don't compare yourself compared right. you know, to to what and, Billy Jean has done. But it's I just, do think it's. But I know important. I can make better videos. Like, there sorry, you go. like I know I'm more talented, and I know I can make better videos. But. That that doesn't take anything away. But, that, right, like, he's his so monetization is just through oh, the fuck. through the roof. Right, um, and that's a that's the thing. It's like he can afford to take time to you know speak at an event for free and that kind of stuff. I'm sure a lot more than Pat Hilton can. <laughs> Pat Hilton's got to do voiceovers for Propelio, or the job doesn't get done and no one gets paid. Right, I don't right. have someone else to do that for me. They're paying for Pat to do yes. it, and then yeah. again, that comes down to. Well, how am I going to pay my bills running really my own business and get out of the corner of the bar? That's what the transition from 10X to now, from 2018 in February of 2014 to 2018, all I did was play at bars, 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 three, four jobs in a day sometimes, singing 10 hours a day to make four or 500 bucks. And now I got people that are like, dude, I'll PayPal you a thousand dollars. If you send me one of your jingle songs, that's awesome, man. What? Wait, what? That, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That and that is a true success right there in itself, man. That that is that. You motivate me to get to need to hustle, like to hustle to to put everything in. Um, you're definitely okay. extremely. You, you are a prime example of what it truly means to lay everything on the line, and that no matter what, even all the obstacles that keep on coming, you're still overcoming and keep right. on pushing through because you know and what we have family we we're like this right. is our life this is what we chose to do this is what we love to do it is our passion and now we just want to make a career out of it and i absolutely right. and love the reason that. why i do name those people's names is because a they're people i've been on stage with and b they're people i respect well you know like that cole hatter guy's got a lovely wife two little girls is very successful, donates so much money at his event to like all these foundations. I want to be, who doesn't want to be like that? Right, right. What? Right. The <laughs> examples that I use in the entrepreneur space are like the top 10 to 15 people, not just based on my opinion, but based on the evidence that exists in the factual real world. 
<laughs> like this isn't just some Kirby's dreamland take on entrepreneur world, you know? And that's yeah. the best part about this. Like again, at that event over the weekend, like uh, in 2014, I was so broke. I was living in my van and I had this idea to do jingles for people. And this guy, Greg Reed posts this thing on Facebook. You know, I'm looking for like, you know, m social media marketing and assistance to help me with social media and stuff like that. And a bunch of people tagged me on it in San Diego. And I, dude, Pat Hilton's your guy, man. He can make videos, make songs, all this. So I went over, I met with this Greg Reed guy. He's got his fancy little uh, slippers on. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he answers the door. Nice guy. Again, super nice dude. And I'm like, man, I can do like songs and like, I mean, I can like make rap songs and all this kind of stuff and do whatever you want and, and make whatever your conference, your little secret knock or whatever it is, or this kind of stuff. Like I've got massive event production experience. Like, dude, I'm your guy. And he's like, you know, man, I mean, I, I like you. I think you got great energy, very, you know, um, energetic and intense and passionate, but it's just like, I just don't see like the value of that translating into like this whole entrepreneurship and entrepreneur events and stuff like that, which is funny because I just saw him over the weekend. He looked at the fucking floor when I walked into the room. <laughs> same guy had nothing to say. So the same guy that told me what I do has no fucking value looked at the floor this past weekend in San Diego when he was speaking on the same stage that I was playing on. So not everyone that you see online, you know, with how many followers has he paid for now? 436,000 or something like that. You know, that doesn't mean anything in the real world because there was nobody there to see him speak that morning. Yep. There's nobody there. <laughs> and it was a bunch of fake gurus with no experience. <laughs> Because I know the guys who have experience and if people don't like it, I don't care anymore because those people don't pay anybody anyway. And he told me what I do has no value. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> and he's lucky I didn't say that on stage. I saved it just for here. Just here on Just Create, Greg. I love it. Breaking. Breaking Stick news. Stick it up your ass, Greg. <laughs> and again, that doesn't make him a bad guy, but no. what he said was fucking wrong. Exactly. And I'm sick of keeping my mouth shut about it. I'm tired of holding this pain inside when it's real and it needs to be projected. You shouldn't be afraid. It's like the Stone Cold Steve Austin was my favorite wrestler in high school. And The Rock got very popular and they were like rivals. But at first, the reason why Stone Cold got big is because he said stuff on TV that he wasn't supposed to say. He would rip on WCW, rip on TNT, rip on the, like the company that fired him. And right. even, this is all like on these documentaries now. And Vince McMahon would be like, dude, dude you, you gotta... cannot go out there and flip off the crowd tonight. Please, dude, you can't. And he's like, all right, Vince. And he'd walk out there, smash the beers and be like, <laughs> ah! and the ratings went through the roof. And I've noticed since that event pissed me off this Sunday, they said no sales on stage. All they did was hawk courses on stage. They said it's all about the kids. Nobody's getting paid. But my friend, the DJ, is getting paid. They said that, um, you know, the room is so expensive. Then I find out that Sheridan is a fucking sponsor of the event. They lied. Yeah. You guys lied to me. Yep. Absolutely. And you brought a bunch of fake gurus up on stage to sell these kids courses. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Wow. Then they tag me in a child hunger thing. Well, guess what? If I keep playing your event, my kid's going to be in the slideshow. <laughs> She's going to go hungry. We all going to go hungry. But so if I don't start saying this stuff, then I'm just as fake as all these other people. And we talked about this. There came a point where I was going to quit the bars. And I picked up the phone and I called Corey Thompson from Roughneck to Real Estate. And I'm like, listen, dude, I'm like in tears. I'm like, I got to quit. I got to get out of this environment. I want to like get sober this year, quit smoking weed, get away from like alcohol always being around me. Not like I'm some crazy alcoholic or something, but it's just, it's a high risk situation for anybody right. to constantly be around. And I'm like, dude, I, I, I'll do whatever. I'll do anything. And he's like, all right, all right. You know, Corey, 
okay, Pat, well, what about a podcast? Let's do a podcast. I'm like, okay, we'll talk real estate. We'll get you on the theme song and this and that and the other thing. So what do you need from me? And I'm like, I mean, dude, if I could just cover my rent, that, that, then I'm good. Right. Okay, well, all right, well, I'll talk to Jacob and we'll pay you Monday. So you can tell them you don't, you don't need to show up anymore. And I'm like, uh, okay. After all wow. these people told me for years that they wouldn't pay me, that I had no value. And this is where I, I, I might start crying. No value, nothing. We'll, we'll put you on stage if you play for free. You know what I mean? And it's just like that shit. As much as you don't want to admit it, it hurts. Yeah. You just got to play through the pain. Mm -hmm. Got What you have has no value. It's like, dude, what? Yeah. What? And then Corey's like, dude, we'll pay you $1,500 a month and cover your rent in San Diego. If we, and we'll start next week. What else do you need? What do we need for the podcast? Do you need a whatever camera? In fact, I'm busy at a deal right now. Why don't I send you my American Express card and you just order whatever you need? I'm like, uh, okay. All right, well, I'll holler at you. And he hangs up. <laughs> so I ordered this microphone and ordered this webcam so that I could do all these shows and these podcasts. And now I'm like, well, maybe you should expand your services and offer this as a service. And that's what I do now is I do podcast video recordings for people. And I make way more money doing that than I ever did at the bar. Oh, and I'm man. still using my audio production skills. And I have all this time to write songs for people and, you know what I mean, produce video ads and voiceovers for people because the time that was being eaten up at the bar is now at home running a real business. I'm not chasing paychecks or anything anymore. Corey right. changed the game. That, that call with Corey changed everything. That's awesome, man. He that finally said, listen, you are worth way more than, than what you're doing. How many times a month are you going to play at the bar for a couple hundred bucks? That's 20 nights at the bar times 200 bucks. You're only making like three or $4,000 a month. You're up all night. You're crabby with the kid. You're fighting with your wife. This has got to end, dude. He's like, you need to under, you need to break up with this relationship you have with money. It's, this is a money problem that you have now. And I know you don't like to talk about money because you're, and it goes right back into this. Yep. You don't want to ask people for what you're worth. You got to, you got to demand what you're worth. Stop devaluing yourself. And that's where I kind of want to wrap up. Um, one, I, tell me t say, in, in a quick summary of everything that we discuss about what's the biggest, if, 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 any creative that's out there, anybody that's working hard to create a business, an entrepreneur, but actually is trying to provide an actual service and product, something that's with value, what would you say to them? What what, what would be your quick message to them? And, 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 and Don't try to be friends with everybody. Straight up. Because when you're providing a creative service, you want everybody to like what you produce. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's going to eventually put you into this corner where you think you're going to get paid if you just meet the right people. And like your network is your net worth. Well, that might be true to a certain degree. But at the same time, if your network is a bunch of rich people that don't pay anybody, then your net worth is zero, my friends. Zero. No matter who that person is online or how much money that person makes, if they're not cutting you a paycheck, you got to find somebody else to work for. Once I stopped chasing the rich guys and called my friend Corey, that's when I got results. Bam. He was right. He was right in front of me the whole time. Bam. Well, you know what though? That that is what an amazing testimony. What is amazing story? Amazing knowledge. Pat, my friend, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, Everyone, don't hold back. That's the, you can't hold back, or you're going to end up 40 or 50 years old with no money in your bank account, with all this stuff that you did for free, and you're not going to have a real business. Exactly. And, and you know what, man, I, I, I encourage everyone to stop right now. Well, don't stop right now. Subscribe to my channel first, but, but after you do with that, 
go to at Pilton uh, at Pat Hilton Live. You yeah. um, at yeah at Pat Hilton Live dot com right? Is that do you have a or yeah Pat yeah. Hilton Live dot com? Pat Hilton Live dot com is your website, and then your your handles is at Pat Hilton Live. Um, brother, dude, I love talking with you. Keep do keep going out with your message, what you're saying. Speak the truth because people like you and me, we need to we need to start we need to start telling the sort of we the ugly start side. Telling the truth, and it's scary. Yeah, like it's scary. I literally just started saying this stuff over the last week or two. Yeah, and even now my engagement's jumping through the roof. I've been afraid to say some of this stuff for freaking years. No more. What, no more of that. I, and what if I say that this guy turned me down and it pissed me off? Well, cool. He's not paying me anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So that's look, as we go out, everyone, I there's a difference between working for free to help you get in, you know, to 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 gain experience versus getting paid and devalued and, and not right. getting paid and doing jobs and devalued. Stop right. devaluing yourself and your talents and your skill sets. Demand what's right. Demand the and expect what it is, what you're worth. All right. Because not only are you helping, when you help yourself that way, you're helping everyone else that's in this industry. Because you know what? When I say no, I, I do it at this price. They're gonna and they they're like, well, I could do it cheaper. That's because someone's always going to say yes to doing it they're cheaper. Always gonna be somebody to do always it. Always gonna do that. Guess and what? You have to start saying no. You're gonna have to start saying no and know that people that always are just looking for the cheapest option are not the right option. And nope. so that, that's just what it comes down to. It. But still create, just create. Go out there and do what you choose to do. What you want to do for free. If you want to make jingles, if you want to basically. Go and find if you found a demand, you think there would be a demand, create that demand. But do right. it on your own terms. Do not let other people dictate your value. Do not let other dictate don't do not let other people dictate what your cost is. You said it, you make it, and you, right. and you stand by it. Even though you and may be not getting a job. Who cares? No good. And that's why, and I want you to before we go, if you go to pathhiltonlive.com right now and you click on store, there's an absolute to the dollar price sheet on what everything costs. If you want 15 second video with a song, it's this much money. If it's, you want a one minute song, it's this much money. If you want a, it's all separated. If you want podcast production, it's this much money per month. It's, I have it all up. Awesome. So that everyone knows now. That's fantastic. Not doing it for a hundred bucks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We could go work at McDonald's for that. Right. Hey, brother. Hey, I appreciate you joining you, on. Dude, I, I hear the music it. calling right now. And uh, I'll talk. Guys, please join me on the next episode of Just Create. And uh, who knows what's going to be bring next. But I hope you enjoy the show. Talk to you soon. Woo.